In this video, in these comments, I will approach to the properties, basic properties of decreasing rearrangement from a more formal point of view. We consider them an example of decreasing rearrangement in my preceding video. That example, I hope, gave you more or less good understanding what the, what's the decreasing rearrangement is. Now we're going to look at the properties of this of this concept of the concept of decreasing rearrangement um, in a formal in a rather formal way. So first, I will recall for you what the concept is uh, for a measurable function f and tilde f. It's the distribution function like this, and in which case the distribution, uh, the decreasing rearrangement is the function which is defined like that. For the convenience of the presentation, I will call this set y sub f. Now, here's the few observations uh, which I want to discuss. First, if I have a couple of points, x1 and x2, which are like this, one of them less or equal than the other, then obviously the inequality like this implies inequality like this. And that means that the subset uh, y sub f associated with the point x1 is embedded into the same in the, into the subset y sub f associated with the point x2. And the for the infimum over this subset will be lower than the infimum over this subset because it's a larger subset. So we have the decreasing rearrangement for the point x1, bigger or equal than decreasing rearrangement for the point x2. Um, so my function f star is indeed non-increasing or loosely speaking decreasing. Right, now the second observation I'd like to make is the one like this. If I have a point y not in the set y sub f, then I also have that every point y which is larger than my original point y not will also be in the point y sub f. Yeah, this is due to the fact that the function n tilde f is actually non increasing. Uh, if you have if you have this inequality for the point y not here, then for every point to the right of y not, because this is a non increasing function, you will also have the same inequality. And that actually ensures the following double embedding. In fact, the right embedding here, this is just the elementary property of the infimum. Uh, yeah, just this this number is less or equal than every number here, and that's what is said. That's exactly what is this, what is said by this embedding. This embedding it's the consequence of this implication that in fact the complete open interval like that will be a part of this set yf. Now, my objective actually to show that here in fact you can put the identity. So in fact the left point here also included also part of the set of y sub f and that's something which which comes from which which is implied by the fact that the decreasing by the by the fact that the distribution function is right continuous right so which means that right continuity means that if i have a sequence of points y ends approaching y not from the right hand side then the function also approach to the limiting value of the function, but this time from the left-hand side, that's because my function here non-increasing. In particular, if you have an equality like this for this sequence of points, y sub n, uh, and which are true for every n, then you have the same inequality for the limiting point. And that's actually enough to conclude that y sub f, this set is in fact exactly equal to this Half open, half infinite interval. Uh, the reason for that, you can choose a sequence of yns which approach to the left endpoint. For each is for each of these individual yns, you will have the inequality like that because each of them will come from the y sub f subset. By the by the with the help of this implication, you will have that the limiting point will also satisfy this inequality, but the limiting point will be this number. And that's why this number will also be in the set y sub f. That's why you have this, or alternatively, you can also say something like this. Right. Now, the next property, which is 
that's something which you have to know about the decreasing rearrangement is the fact that the decreasing rearrangement by itself is the right continuous function. That's something which we're going to prove. So if you approach, if you have a sequence xn which approach x0 from the right hand side, you will have the corresponding limit for the values of the decreasing rearrangement function. <coughs> Uh, I'll call this left hand side B and we will prove this inequality. We observe straight away that actually we have the we're going to prove this identity uh, but we observe straight away that we have the inequality like that. It's the, it's, it's, this is showed by the fact that you have a function the decreasing rearrangement is in fact decreasing or non-increasing. Uh, so each individual value here because it's t it is taken at the point which is to the right of the point x0, each individual value here is less or equal than this value, that's why the limit also will be less or equal than this value. Now, we need to prove here, we need to prove that in fact you have the identity here, and that's how, we, how, how I'm going to do that. It is a rather interesting way, in fact, look at this. Um, I'll take the point y, which is strictly larger than b, and for such point, look what I'm going to say, because y is larger than the limit, it will be larger than the individual sequence of the limit after some point. So I'm going to say there is a point, there is an index n not such that each numerical, each number here in the sequence will be less than y after this index n not. If I interpret this, it means that y belongs to the y sub f set for the point xn. If I interpret this, y the definition of the y sub f set, we will have something like this for every n big or equal than n not. If I use the fact that my n tilde f, I know, if I use the fact that xn converge to the xn converge to the x not, if I use this fact then I have also the inequality for the point x not, which is a limiting point. And now if I interpret what this inequality means in terms of the y sub f set, and I will, if I use the fact that y sub f set is exactly something like this, we have the inequality like that. So here's my proof now of the identity here. If you assume the contrary, that you don't have identity here, so if you have strict less inequality like that, you can find a point in between here, which will be on one side larger than b, but on the other side less than f star of x0, and that's something which contradicts to this chain of implications, because every point which is larger than b must also be larger than f star of x0. That's why you have the identity here. Now, the final property which I want to discuss in relation to decreasing rearrangement is the one uh, which is which is like that. If I look at this inequality now, if I have the inequality like this, f star of x bigger than y not, uh, because of this identity, because of this description of the y sub f subset. This is equivalent to saying that y0 doesn't belong to the y sub f set of the point x. But if I interpret the, if I use the definition of the y sub f set here, from here, then I can equivalently, equivalently say that this means that we have the inequality like that. That's the opposite of this inequality. And that's it, just like a chain of equivalences, with actual, which, which actually says to me that the, we have this identity between sets. The set of those points in the real line where my decreasing rearrangement, big or equal than given point y0, given level y0, is in fact this half open interval. That's in, uh, and that's actually, if you interpret this from the, uh, from the point of view of the uh, distribution of the function of star, you have that the distribution of the function of star actually equal to the distribution function of the original function. Yeah. <clears throat>